Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm going to show you how to repair aluminum rims. So if you have aluminum rims and they have any kind of damage such as this curb or gutter rash, whatever you want to call it, or even if your rims have the clear coat that's bubbling up and it just doesn't look good at all, or if you even just have simple scratches like this, this video is going to go through the process that will show you how to fix your rims to make them look really good again. So let's begin. With this process, we're going to keep the tire on the rim to make it really simple, and we have the rim off the car. The next thing you want to do is remove the center cap from the rim. Just going to want to pop this out. For most cars, just tap the cap outwards and it'll pop out just like that. Okay, so I just really quickly want to outline the basic steps for fixing an aluminum rim. After you get that center cap out, the first thing you want to do is clean the rim. After the rim's nice and clean, we're going to work on all our scratches, and by work on it, I mean we're going to sand them down and make them nice and smooth. After we sand them down and make them nice and smooth, we're going to strip the clear coat from the rim. After we strip the clear coat from the rim, we're going to polish the whole rim, make it nice and shiny. After the rim gets polished, we're going to clear coat it, which will put that protective barrier on it, and after that clear coat dries, we are done. The first step is we want to clean off the rim. So just get soapy water, whatever you want to use. In this case, I'm just using dish soap and water. You want to remove as much dirt as possible so you have a clean rim to work on. Now with this rim, we have a lot of damage everywhere. We got damage all over the place. Pretty much the whole entire rim has to be redone. We're going to make it go from looking like this to this. So let's begin. So there's a couple of ways you can go about removing the scratches in your rim. My favorite way is using a rotary tool like this Dremel with a flap disc. This is a 120 grit flap disc. It's a little too coarse, honestly. You should use something around 200 grit, but it'll get the job done. After the flap disc, we're gonna be using the sandpaper. Make sure it's a wet and dry sandpaper because we're gonna be wet sanding. It's also a good quality sandpaper because the better the quality of the sandpaper, the better the job's gonna come out and the better finish you're gonna get. With the sandpaper, we're gonna go from 400 grit to 600 grit, to 1,000 grit, to 2,000 grit. And then we're gonna buff the rim with some type of metal polish. You want something that'll buff aluminum, and both of these will work. So let me show you how to remove the scratches from the rim. I'm gonna show you how to remove this curb rash right here, and this process will work for any type of scratch on the rim. Since we're gonna be using a rotary tool, make sure that you use your safety glasses, and maybe even something to protect your lungs so you don't breathe this dust in. With this rotary tool, I'm staying between 10 and 20,000 RPMs. And the key is you wanna move this tool back and forth. You don't want it to dig into one area too long. You can see I'm not just focusing on the spot that has damage, I'm focusing on the whole area because you don't want to just dig into that one little spot. It'll create a divot and it'll look really bad. You want to evenly sand this whole area with a little bit of focus on that scratched area. And you can see that damage just disappeared. It's not there anymore. Now you're probably asking, why didn't you remove the clear coat first? Well, the clear coat actually acts as a protectant. So if you go a little bit too far using your flap disc or using any sanding method, that clear coat's gonna protect the aluminum finish because you don't need to sand everything. And you can see here, that scratch is completely gone. So now let's get rid of these scratches right here. Now we're gonna use the same strategy for these scratches. Keep that flat wheel moving around a large area and don't focus on one spot. Don't worry, over time the scratches will be sanded away, so be patient. If you focus on one area, you'll sand off too much aluminum and cause waves and that won't look good. So spread out the sanding over a large area. Notice how I sand past the scratches. I'm even sanding areas with no scratches, which are right next to the deep scratches. So it's a smooth transition. I'll tell you one thing, it's addicting to watch this curb rash disappear. Now check this out. We removed all the scratches. I need to work on this over here, but the area we focused on and I showed you is perfectly smooth. This looks gorgeous. And that's all it takes. A little bit of flat wheel, keep it moving around to make sure you're not digging into one area. There's no waves, there's no divots. This is one completely smooth piece, which is exactly what you want. Check out this before and after. Here's the before with the curb brush, and here's the after. Look at that difference. That is awesome. And we aren't done. We're going to make it look even better than this. And once you get all of the scratches out, we can move on to the next step, which is stripping the clear coat. So I'm going to do the rest of the rim and get everything to the same finish I just showed you. The whole rim's covered in curb brush and scratches, so there's plenty for me to remove. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, I am done getting all the scratches out. This rim looks awesome. There are no deep grooves or scratches anywhere on the rim. All that curb rash is gone. Look at that. Now this is looking great. The next step is gonna be clean all this aluminum powder off the rim, and then we're gonna go and remove all the clear coat. Honestly, at this point, just get your hose and hose it down. So this next step is my least favorite part. And it's using a chemical stripper to strip the clear coat off the rim. And the reason why it's my least favorite part is because the stripper is not something you want to get on your skin. And you don't want to get it on the tires either. And it's just that this is the most tedious part and you have to make sure all the clear coat comes off. I put the stripper into a spray bottle and I'll rub it onto the clear coat with a sponge brush. But before any of that, make sure you dry the rim completely so there's no water which will dilute the chemical stripper. All right, so we're just gonna spray some of this on here and work it in. You'll have to use a lot of that chemical stripper, so don't be afraid to really cover the rim in a thick coat. And make sure you don't get any on the tire, and if you do, clean it off right away. After the whole rim is coated, sit back and let the stripper do its thing. You can see how it works to bubble up the clear coat, and you can actually hear it cracking and popping away. After about an hour, the clear coat is all bubbled up, and now we're going to neutralize the chemical stripper so we can hose off the rim. Alright, so let's go neutralize this. As you wipe on this neutralizing chemical, hopefully your clear coat comes right off. So now that this is neutralized, I'm going to use an abrasive sponge to remove any clear coat that hasn't come off yet. If your clear coat doesn't come off easily, you might need to use another coat of chemical stripper. For my rim, about 80% is coming off with this first coat of stripper. Now hose it down and let's see where we're at. In this case, after one dose of clear coat stripper and some rubbing with an abrasive sponge, you can see there's still some clear coat left on here. So we're going to have to go back with the abrasive sponge and the chemical stripper until the clear coat is completely removed. This is the most difficult part and it's super tedious, but once you're done with this, you're almost done. I'm going to use another coat of chemical stripper and skip ahead to where the clear coat is removed. You don't need to see me do this process all over again. Okay, so after a second coat of stripper and then using this abrasive sponge again, we have removed all of the clear coat on this rim. This is the most difficult part. And realize that this doesn't get all the clear coat off, which is why you have to go back in with either an abrasive sponge or even with your flat wheel and get all that clear coat removed. It's very important to get the clear coat completely removed. Now that the clear coat is off, let's move on to the sanding and polishing step. The flap disc that we used is 120 grit, so we want to make sure we move up in grit from there. Because we had that on a rotary tool, it made it pretty smooth, we could start off with 400 grit sandpaper. We're going to be doing a wet sand, which means that you want to use water, or in this case, soap and water. The soapy water is going to help the sandpaper and prevent the aluminum pieces from sticking to the sandpaper, so you get a nice even sand. Don't be afraid to use too much soapy water. So with your 400 grit, if you see any imperfections, you want to make sure you get those imperfections out now. Don't worry about the light scratching that is caused by the sandpaper because that will slowly get buffed out. But any deeper scratches that you could see, you want to get out now. So don't be afraid to push hard in the areas that you really need to get those scratches out. When you sand, you want to sand in random circular motions, if possible. And just put a medium pressure on the sandpaper. You don't want to press so hard that you get exhausted, and you don't want to press too light where the sandpaper isn't smoothing out the surface. So we just used our 400 grit, now we're going to go to our 600 grit. And with the 600 grit, you should just be smoothing down the 400 grit scratches. The 600 grit won't be removing any of the deeper scratches, so if you see any deeper ones, go back with your 400 grit and get them out. Now we're going to go from our 600 grit to 1000 grit. Now as you use the 1000 grit, you should pretty much be seeing the scratches disappear. And you should start seeing the surface get a little shiny. After our 1000 grit, we're going to go to our final grit, and that's 2000. With the 2000 grit, the surface should feel really smooth, and the sandpaper should be sliding real easily. You'll also notice the rim getting shiny, and there should be no visible scratches. Any scratches that you see now that you might have missed can easily be fixed by going back to the 400 grit sandpaper and working your way back up to the 2000 grit. You only have to do that in the area you missed. You don't have to do the whole rim again.
All right, the rim has been sanded down from 400 grit all the way up to 2000 grit, and this is looking great. Now what we want to do is we want to inspect the rim. And what you're looking for are any scratches that you need to correct before the final polish. And looking at this rim, well, it looks really good. No scratches are standing out, so I think it's time to go polish it up and give it a nice shine. Before you polish the rim, make sure the rim is completely dry. The rim is dry, so let me show you what we're going to use to polish. I got this kit that comes with a foam polisher, and it attaches to the drill, and it comes with polish, so it makes the job that much easier. What you're going to do is you're going to apply the polish directly to the cone, and then you're going to rub that polish onto the rim at a slow speed. This prevents that polish from slinging off when you first use it. And once you work it into the rim at a slow speed, we could crank it up and give this baby a good polish. The cone is great because it fits into the hard to reach places and trust me when I say it's worth the price because doing this by hand would take forever and it wouldn't come out looking as good. So take your time, use the polish as needed and buff the entire surface of the rim. Once you polish the whole rim, take a microfiber towel and buff the polish off by hand. Oh, wow, look at this shine. After polishing, you could stop here or you could put a clear coat over the metal to keep that shine without constantly having to polish the rim. Next, get some new gloves on and grab some rubbing alcohol so we could degrease the rim and prep it for paint. Get the towel wet with the alcohol and clean away. Make sure you clean the entire rim and keep track of where you're cleaning so you don't miss an area. There are a ton of spokes here. Okay, looking at our towel, it's not getting dirty anymore and we touched every surface on this rim. So now we want to let it dry and that shouldn't take long because we used alcohol which evaporates quickly. As it dries I want to show you a neat little trick that I learned for masking off the tire because you don't want to get spray paint on the tire. So the trick I learned a while back is to use note cards to mask off the tire. Just slip a note card between the rim and the tire around the whole edge of the rim. This works faster and better than tape. Usually tape won't even stick to a tire. It just peels right off. And boom, look at that. Looks kind of cool. Remember to tape off the valve stem as well and that looks good. You want to follow the instructions on your paint can. You want to use a clear gloss that is UV resistant and non-yellowing. This is the same clear coat I used in my headlight restoration video and it works great. So follow the instructions and let's put down three even coats. Notice as I spray I move around the whole wheel to get at different angles so I get complete coverage. There are a ton of spokes on this rim so it's important to do that. Also notice I start spraying on the cards and then spray across the rim and stop spraying when I get to the cards on the other side. I never start or stop spraying on the actual rim which helps keep the coats even and prevents orange peel. Okay so that was the first of three coats and each of the three coats is going to be a medium thickness coat. This isn't a light layer but it's also not a heavy layer that's going to run. You got to find that sweet spot. Now let it dry for about five minutes and then a apply a second coat. Here is coat two. Excellent. Coat two is done and in five minutes we're going to finish with coat three. And here is coat three. This is looking great. All right, we're going to let the rim dry, but before we let it dry, make sure you pull out these cards so they don't stick to the rim. After a few hours the rim is dry to the touch, let's install that Cadillac center cap. I'm also going to remove this tape from the valve stem. Wow, look at this. The rim is finally done and it came out amazing. The curb rash is gone, there are no more scratches, and it looks perfect. My buddy is going to be real happy that his rim's been repaired, and you could easily do this at home for real cheap. Now you know how to fix an aluminum rim, and if you hit the curb or get your rim scratched up, yeah, it stinks, but don't worry, you can fix it. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give the video a thumbs up. Also, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Up on the screen are going to be a few videos. You can find the links to those videos in the description below. Also in the description below are the links to any products I used in this video.